Hey everybody, it's me, Jennifer from Little Metal Boxes, and I'm sharing with you today tips and tricks on burnishers because Julia's going to be doing a little bit of kombu this weekend. So, uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about our burnishers. Hey there! And she's going to be joining me here live in just a second. Hey Robin! And we've got, hey Julie, we've got all kinds of, um, oh hey, how are you doing? Um, hey, hi Chris. So, <laughs> so Julia is going to be jumping on here. Hey Lynn, oh my gosh, hi. And we've got, uh, let's see where she is here. She should be jumping on. Where are you? Let's see. I can find her. There she is. Let's get her on here. All right. And Julia. Hey. Hello. Hey there. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. we're doing good here. I have got all my burnishers out to talk to you about this today. So, all of them. Um, so the hey, entire oh, family. I do. I do. I've got all of them out. So <laughs> anyway, I've got yeah the steel ones, the the stone ones, the ones that are other, <laughs> the ones that are handmade, <laughs> the ones that are machine made. So, um, but yeah, I've got a bunch of stuff and I know you've got your kombu class coming up on Saturday. I just had somebody ask me about it on Instagram and uh, we thought it'd be a good idea to talk a little bit about the burnishers that you like to use for that. So um, tell me first, because I, I know the answer to this, but for our viewers, <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about what the, the kombu workshop is. What, what it about. is. Okay. Yeah. Um, so kombu is an ancient Korean technique, I believe it started mm -hmm. in Korea, and it's a way to pressure fuse high carat gold onto a less precious substrate. So traditionally, I think it was used on the inside of food vessels and drinking spoons. vessels. Spoons, especially. And spoons. Um, so you could put a layer of gold on your silver plate or cup or spoon or whatever it might be. Right. Um, you can attach kombu to sterling silver, but there's a little bit of a process that's involved to make that happen. Usually it, it happens on fine silver. Right. So and it's, it's a, a very, it's a very, it's a highly decorative and yeah. graphic design yeah. sort of stylistic way of adding a gold pattern as well. And it can be uh, accentuated, I think, really beautifully. Uh, using something like liver of sulfur and patinas right. to create like a black and gold sort of Right, look. you can patina the, it's sort of like, think of it like this, it's sort of like collage with with gold foil, right? I prefer chincole. Chincole. <laughs> a chincole term. Uh, chincole. Um, chincole is a, a printmaking term when they add like a uh, one paper to another, and it's like sort of uh, pressed onto the surface, and it goes okay. To and, but it's adhered then, so it's yeah. not it's mm -hmm. not like collage in the sense that you think of collage as involving glue. So there's no right. glue involved. So yes, right. uh, so you're a chincole where you're actually probably there is using some, heat. There is some adhesive. There is some adhesive. There is some adhesive. Pressure. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, well, okay, but it becomes like one surface and looks really lovely. Um, yeah. yeah, they become one surface. They the gold cannot be removed. Uh, right. you can, you can actually screw up your kombu <laughs> if you do it too soon. So right. if you put it on a piece before you're going to need to solder it, something, and then you heat oh. it up, the gold will basically alloy with the silver and disappear. Yeah. The but the nice thing is you can add it once the piece is finished. Yes. So it's yeah. sort of a finishing process. Yeah. Which is it's really definitely, cool. innocent. You, you're doing yeah. it at very low temperatures. So you're doing this at, you know, I'm use I use, actually use, um, a little hot plate to do right for the heat so right, it's really right. fun it's it's really pretty low tech but there's yeah. a lot of brain for your yeah. buck and um like you said you can you know kind of put tiny little shapes down in gold and then make the background silver black so you get this yeah. really beautiful contrast between the high carat gold and the dark of right the well and and it, it uh people like susan ewing and mm -hmm. um Camellia well, O'Kim are great yeah. examples. And I believe uh, uh, the Pijanowskis, the Pijanowskis, I think, were the ones that originally brought it to the United States as a technique um, back in the late 70s, early 80s, I think. Yeah, and, you know more about yeah. that than I do. 
And it's, you know, it's been, it's really a beautiful technique. And traditionally with a lot of like the spoons for baby spoons, it was used a lot um, so that they would have like, you know, that silver spoon that had the gold and a little bit of gold ingested was supposed to be, you know, health benefits for, you know, people that were eating off of those particular things. So, yeah. So anyway. So locally, I was going to say, so locally, um, Catalina Anderson does really right. beautiful yeah. kind of work. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah. And you can see her, her stuff at uh, Danica Designs uh, shop as well here in Seattle and online. So they've got beautiful examples of, of hers. Yeah. She does a beautiful job. So um, tell me, if you will, what, um, when you're pushing this down, usually you're using uh, a burnisher to sort of tack things in place and then help it sort of smooth into the surface. Uh -huh. What um, uh, burnishers are your favorite for this process? Well, I have several. Um, probably one of my, so the problem with the steel burnishers is they get hot. Mm -hmm. So one of my favorite steel burnishers is this one, which uh, is actually, I think it's a printmaking tool. So yeah. Uh, it's got a burnisher on one end. Right. It's hard to see. Let's see if I can get it so you can focus. You can see it's got, and I've overheated the tip a little bit, which is why the tip is a little brown, but it's got a curved surface and uh, it's, you know, very shiny on one end. And on this end, it has a triangular scribe. And right. I believe this is made, it says on it, EC Lyons, L-Y-O-N-S. And I've had right. students look it up and find it. I don't remember where I got it, but I love this. It, it feels good in the hand and it has, because it comes to such a sharp point, you can really like get in, because you can do kombu on textured sheet as well as on flat sheet. And if you want to really like, you have, you have to like push every piece of the kombu down for it to stick. So for you have tack. to rub every piece right mm -hmm. every section of it so this will get get you into tiny little spots um yeah. so i love this one uh the, the, like i said the downside of steel is they heat up so you traditionally also you can use the agate burnishers and mm. you can make these you know you could just go get a tumbled piece of agate right and just you know use it you turn me on to some wonderful ones that um, I, I bought on, on uh, Amazon that were really inexpensive. Um, These? Those, those, yes. Which is like a set of five for like $13. Yeah, so that way, right? even if you drop one and break it, because, you know, that's one of the downsides of agate is if you drop it, snap. On a, um, yeah, on a hard you know, floor, it's going to break. But it's gonna break. the nice thing is the, the ones that I found on Amazon – are, yeah. First of all, they're beautiful because they're like agate and carnelians and all kinds of things. But they come in like different sizes. It's a little right. variety of sizes. So if you look up um, uh, agate burnisher set, you may find the ones. And they were like 13 or 15 bucks for a set yeah, they of five. Were, they were not very expensive. Right. Right. You know? right. I mean, these are more expensive because they, they're shaped. Like this one has sort of a bullet shape. Uh, like yeah. a long point comes to a very yeah. rounded point. And, these two, and then this these one's two more of a nice shape. Like Rio or, yeah. Exactly. Like you can see, you and I both have the same exact ones that I'm pretty sure both yeah. came from Rio. Yeah. Okay. And this this has an aluminum be, handle. Because it's mounted in like a paintbrush handle. Right. right? Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's going to be, you know, they're all a little bit different. They all vary just a little bit. Right. Um, and you can find agate burnishers in other places too. Um, you know, and some of them you'll find in like, uh, they'll be dyed or, mm -hmm. um, yeah, carnelian. And I've got one here by uh, Bill. Look at that one. Oh, so from one, Bill Dawson. From Bill Dawson, yeah. So oh, that's Bill a Dawson, beauty. Isn't that pretty? And just using. It looks like a flame. Uh, yeah. And just using like a carved handle of wood, which I just yep. think is so beautifully hewn. And it's just gotten smoother and smoother with wear. The um, and these are just riveted into the wood and through the carnelian. Oh, and it's so like a tooth drill, bead. You drill it's like the a tooth a bead. He didn't drill it. It's just a tooth bead. They actually come like that, and so you can actually buy like carnelian tooth shaped beads like this. Oh, and so he uh, like did a glue I and said rivet. Tooth bead, but you said tooth bead. Tooth. Yes. yes. And yes. brass tube 
<laughs> here. Yes. But riveted those together and a little bit of glue. But this one I just love because it feels so good and it's handmade. Yeah. And Bill Dawson is an amazing tool well, maker. Well, and, and what's lovely artist. about that is oh, it yes. does have that curved shape at the tip because mm -hmm. both of these, right. both of these commercial ones from Rio Grande, which are beautiful and I love them, but they don't, guys, love they them. don't curve up the way this one has that beautiful little curve up. Right? right, and so right. Bill's so, tooth-shaped yeah. bead is going to do more like this. I mean, this one I just really yeah. love. Gets into those little points. Well, and the other thing that's um, you know really you know you can do these yourself. You know, if you've got like you were saying, exactly. if you've got a really nice little tumbled uh, piece of agate that's really mm -hmm. slick and smooth, you know, add your own paintbrush handle and you're good right. to go. You can usually you know fix it with like epoxy or something. Um, I think this one was originally done with like hot glue or something. So it's, it's a little loose, but little loose. Um, so, yeah. So that loose. actually is a really good point though. The one that you got off of Amazon would not by itself work super well for kombu because it's a little short. So you can't, you, you your hand is going to be a little too close to the hot plate, you yeah. know? So but you, you would add a handle. You could add a handle, but just don't use hot glue to do that because again, it will soften the glue. <laughs> Um, while we're on the subject of making your own, yeah. let me talk about this one. So this is another of my favorite ones. This burnisher has this very, whoops, sorry, round, wrong side. Um, it has a very rounded, it's sort of like a, like a finial sort of shape. It's almost right. Here. Yeah. So it's a little hard to get the focus right, but, um, it's, it's a really nice and it comes to like a very a blunt shape. It's a bud shape. Thank you. That is the shape I was, you know, it's like finial, like the end of a mule yeah. proof. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. Finial is a good word for it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, it's a little bud shape. So what this is, is the back end of a really long screwdriver. Here's Kathleen. Hello. Hi, Kathleen. So oh, this yeah. is a screwdriver. So it's a screwdriver point. And it's a really long one. Right. That, you know, it's designed to like plunge into your your drill yeah. and then reach yeah all the way in yeah. so this was the knobby bit that would that was hexagonal oh. that would chuck into the to the drill and hold firm right, right. Got so it. Yeah, you can yeah. find these if you're in like a junk shop someplace that has tools this is the sort of thing that's going to be you know hanging out in the absolutely in the absolutely hey, Chris, and then just, um, i just so ground the end to a bud shape and then polished it really right yeah. high you know and and that's a good point i mean if you've got an old tool whether it's an old file um i i really like i have a bunch of old triangle files real big ones that i don't use for anything that mm -hmm. i came by like you know at a junk shop kind of thing or swap meet and those are the ones that i anneal file down put a curve on them polish them up and they're good to go as a burnisher but making your own makes it really great to be able to use for whatever you need. Um, not all burnishers are made for everybody, you know? No. My, I mean, I love these guys. I love my agate burnishers, especially the, the Bill Dawson Carnelian one. But I've also got a couple of other substitutes um, that I like a lot that I use. And this one is my pen vise that mm -hmm. has, I've got a sharp needle in one end and a craft, big old craft needle in the other. And like a big tapestry needle. It. Whoops, sorry, dog. Uh, so, so yeah, just yeah, a big like a tapestry old, like, needle. Like yeah, a tapestry needle. Yeah, yeah. And they're fantastic because one, they're a really, really hard steel. They've got, you know, I like the ones that have a little bit of a rounded point on them, um, needle point, uh, and um, needle point is sharper than the tap. No, tapestry needles are sharper than the embroidery needles. There's no, moments. the way around. So tapestry, way around. tapestry and needlepoint needles will be blunter because you're going through holes in the right. That's in it. the canvas, yes. but you don't want to pierce the the right. Yarn. So it's it's that they have big eyes. Right. The, right. the way that you can tell is the darning needles and tapestry needles and stuff like that that are meant for really big thick yarn have really big eyes and they tend to right. be blunt as well. Right, right. So those are the ones that I kind of like for. Um, even doing like small vessels because I can get into those little areas 
with a tiny little burnisher like this. And this just makes a great handle. Um, right. But you can also use like, you know, like an engraving yeah, handle. And those really well. handle. Mm -hmm. So, but I like these kind of engraving tools for, or uh, sorry, um, uh, burnishing tools for all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And I do, you know, I have my steel ones. One of the things I think that a lot of people forget is that, or don't know, is that you really have to polish those things up and keep oh, them. Oh my God. They have to have a mirror polish on clean and, yeah, mm -hmm. because much like hammers, you know, if it's got a texture on it, it's going to scratch up the surface yeah. as you're burnishing. And the whole point right. is to have a clean, shiny surface that you're burnishing with. So when you smooth it down, it leaves that shiny surface on your metal, whether right. it's come right. through. Exactly. And you definitely don't want to have any little nicks and, and burrs on this when you're no. doing kombu, because it'll scratch yeah. the gold. You, you actually have to be... You, you're right. You have to be careful. Like this one has quite a sharp edge on it mm -hmm. and the tip is very sharp. And so you really do have to be careful when you're working with it because before right. the gold is fully adhered, uh, you can, you can basically scrape it and it will, you would just scrape it off. Yeah. Right? Well, and you can tear it, which you, you know, can you tear it. And then you can actually, metal. you can also scratch through it cause it's pretty thin. So again, if you're using a tool that's rough, you could be doing more damage to your gold than, than the exactly, actual process. Exactly. I mean, you can add more gold, but I mean, that sort of defeats Thank the purpose. Thank you for adding more gold. Do you, know? you added more gold. But um, yeah, that's one of the reasons I kind of like the agate burnishers because they are so slick. They're and super shiny. Slick. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That, you know, you're not, and they're, you know, have a high shine on them. So you're not going to usually do that. And I always check mine to make sure that I don't have any, you know, any breakage or cracks or chips Crack, or anything right. on them. Um, if I do, I'll, I'll buff them out. I'll use like my, uh, my diamond wheels and my like sharpening tools and polishing tools and actually polish that back up so it doesn't scratch. But yeah, you know, it's um, really important to do that. I usually will, when I get a new burnisher or if I'm like making a burnisher out of steel, I always make sure that I, um, clean up any roughness on the edges so it's not too sharp or any little burrs. If I run my nail down the edge, it, it shouldn't catch or snag or, you know, it should be perfectly slick. And if I've got, you know, any little nicks or scratches on there or burrs on there, it's going to hurt my bezels. And I really don't want that to happen. So what I'll do is, you know, sand out any, you know, if it's got a gash across it from a file or something like that, I will go back and take that out and then buff this up usually with something like Zam and mm -hmm. make sure that I've got, you know, a really high gloss shine on the steel before I go to burnish anything because I, yeah, I don't want to damage my, my bezels of which nope. I have a ton of on the bench right now. Yeah. And, so you know, and for, for Kumbu, you definitely don't want anything that's going to, damage the gold as you're laying it down on the surface right, right? so yeah. i in the class i will discuss why the issue of it heating up is an issue right so right we'll give that away today but um yeah. that's why the agate burnishers can be helpful because they don't get hot and the steel yes. burnishers do get hot and you have to be aware of that and you know work around it so there are advantages and disadvantages to both yeah yeah um Brett's saying, um, yeah, Zam is fun. Zam is the stuff. <laughs> Zam, Zam is the Zam. stuff, man. It is. It yep. is really great for any of your steel tools when you got to clean them up. Having a little bit of that in the drawer that you can, you know, pull out and buff something up is great. Yep. It's um, it's usually used for like steel and chrome and things like that. Mm -hmm. But it is aggressive and it's a very fine aggressive. So it gives you a high shine, but it also removes a lot of metal, especially on things like silver and things. But for steel, I'm a big it's great. Of fabuluster too. And fabuluster is great too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's another yeah. good one. So, so speaking yeah. of um, speaking of picking up old tools, ah, what you got? What are we doing this weekend? The swap meet. <laughs> yeah, there's a big mess behind me. You can't see the bins of stuff that I'm preparing I've seen them. I've to seen them in person. <laughs> You've seen them in person. Um, yeah. yeah, Jennifer and I have uh, reserved a table to get to hang out with each other, BFF, um, mm -hmm. on Sunday morning, 
for the Seattle Metal Skilled Swap Meet, which is over at Fair Isle Brewing in Ballard. And it starts right. at 11 and it runs until 2. Right. And I'm going to be there with some, I sort of am doing a purge in my studio. So I have some really nice tools, actually, that I'm selling yeah. for not a whole lot of money. But I'm also getting rid of some display stuff and um, you know, other random yeah. things. So. The, the swap meet is so great. I mean, first of all, there are a lot of great, you know, people there that are. It's fun to know, just like go talk to people. And just, to, to just to hang out and say hi. And it's going to be outdoors. This it's organic. going to be outdoors, so yeah. you'll have lots of air circulation, so, you know, you'll yeah. be safe into the COVID. Yeah, and plus the fact that uh, Danica Design, uh, usually, the, it used to be a, a Seattle Metals Guild event, and Danica mm -hmm. Design sort of picked it up and continued doing it, um, and this year, instead of doing it at Danica Design, they're going to be doing it at her husband's place, Fair Isle Brewing, which has great beer, right. <laughs> so if you want to stop by and oh yeah i wish everybody lived closer sorry, I wish, um, for those of you who live further yeah. away i'm sorry that you don't live closer but for the local people yay yeah. come on out you know 11 yeah, o'clock fair isle brewing on sunday yeah. yeah and there's no reason why if you guys are you know if you've got your own local guild or uh microbrew place <laughs> you know it's uh, or just some place that you want to do a swap meet at you know it can be mm -hmm. kind of fun just to get the local guild together and say hey let's do you know let's let's trade switch it up do a swap meet and uh see you know do a trade see what everybody's got and just sort of you know do it as like a um a tag sale you know kind of thing right you know right, right. um yeah so but we have other classes coming like up too so you know i have kombu coming up this weekend uh next weekend i think i'm doing the fidget and band ring so that yeah. spinner right. rings which of course my studio is in a complete wreck right now so i'm like oh wait i should have had one out so i could fiddle with it but there are pictures okay. on the website <laughs> yeah well and we've got um after that you're doing the electro etching class yes. coming up on august yes. 6 and kinetic rivets which is awesome so if you're wanting that, to do oh, that right here, here. You so know, that. hinges and moving parts and mechanisms and things like that the kinetic rivets is <laughs> awesome <laughs> There's a tiny boxing glove on the end of her. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah. So, doing kinetic rivets, that's coming up August 14th. There's the um, Not Ring Roundup. The one that's not on here yet is the Jewelry Design class, which is going to be right. uh, starting uh, the end of August, beginning of September. Uh, and Helen's doing uh, Intro to Glass Clay. And She's doing some you, really fun experiments with glass clay. No, if you man. go and look on our Instagram feed, you can see some of her pictures, or you can look uh, at hers, Heliona, he Helio H, I think yeah. is what it is. Yeah. Um, at, or you see who's following us and find hey, look at look at Helen Coward's website. Uh, look at Helen uh, Coward's pictures. website, right? Instagram. So, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, Sorry, but, I, but all this the stuff is amazing. It's like. Um, it's like the glass version of precious metal clay mm -hmm. and it is. So for those of you that have, you know, know what precious metal clay is and, you know, you fire it in the oven and it sort of turns into, you know, silver or bronze. Um, right. It this burns out your glass it. that does that. Yeah. And so you can model it, shape it and fuse it together kind of like PMC. And so she's going to be doing that on August 21st. Um, that is, I, I'm really looking forward to that because some of the stuff that Julie, that, uh, Helen does, she, she has worked in glass as well as jewelry. She's got her foot in both worlds and has a lot of amazing solutions and additions to jewelry through the glass, uh, work that you can do and keeping it like in a small studio. So you can do the glass work with what I've got you know, in my jewelry studio, and I don't have to have like, you know, all the, you know, like glass blowing stuff on a bigger scale to be able to do it. It's really, mm -hmm. she makes it really simple. Um, one of the things that she did recently that just kind of blew my mind working with borosilic glass was that you can bend it and shape it with a candle. I know. I, was like, I know. What? I just think that. And in it's fact, you, you had pointed out, I had this article, you're like, oh, you should talk to Helen, I have this article about borosilicate. Speaking. Burnished yeah, speaking burnishers. Yeah. I had pulled this out of a uh, Lapidate Journal from back in 2004. Yes. And um, so, yeah. So who knows? Maybe we can get Helen after we do the Kumbu class because these would work great 
for kombu. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, borosilic glass would be great kombu burnisher. Right. Absolutely. Pyrex, yeah. They're like Pyrex burnishers is what they are. Yeah. So I need to sh send that to her so she can, you know, Absolutely. work with the glass for us. On, yeah. You know, glass got, let's see. File work rings and reticulation heat surface. Uh, you haven't done reticulation for a while. I haven't done reticulation in a long time. And the cool thing is that you can use kombu on reticulated surfaces. Ah, it's, it, it's really so cool. cool. And oh, the file, the file work class. Yeah, Julie wants to know. Um, oh, can you file explain work, the file work class a little yeah, bit? Yeah, the file work comes out of the custom knife world. And so in the custom knife world, they would file patterns into the edges of the spine of the knife. And then after you've created the, you know, this is the top edge, not the blade edge, but the top edge of the knife. And then the handle would go on either side and they would like put resin and stuff around it. You would see this, you know, pattern in there. Um, you can do it on silver and other precious metals and basically do it as a ring and, and not have anything else. Bracelet. To it. Yeah, yeah. Bracelets and also, you stuff, also yeah. see it often in like Southwest, heavy Southwest cuff bracelets often will have some file work on them. Um, it's more dimensional when it's in jewelry form. With the knife world, it was all about creating a pattern that you would just see from the top, right? From the flat, on the flat edge of the spine. With the jewelry world, you, you can, you know, have more kind of faceting and things going on. But yeah, more three-dimensional. What I'm going to show people how to do is make a band ring with heavy 10 gauge square wire, which is thick, which is heavy. So part of the challenge is just manipulating this material to get the ends together and get a nice smooth ring that's a flat washer, right? So it's not all, you know, wonky. So that'll be part of the class, kind of solving, helping you solve those problems, showing you how to do that. And then the other part is uh, how to, you know, how to use the files to make designs and how to mark it up so i have a really great like radial template that you mean lay out you mean lay out a pattern right how to lay out a pattern exactly so how to lay out a radial pattern you know so it's like you've made your ring and now you want to get exactly eight things going around it you know you want to make sure your marks are exactly where they need to be and that can be a little kind of like that's really great about that class is that you know if you you know don't know what the needle files are for if you don't mm -hmm. know what they can do this is a really good class to like up your skills um, mm -hmm. with your file work and it's it's great for things around pendant vessels or well, around I'm... rings or around yeah. bracelets and there's so many, or even for earring hoops, you can make really beautiful things with the right. file work. And sometimes just being able to manipulate the files the way that you need them to mm -hmm. is a skill that is, you know, necessary, you know, to get in things in general when you're working. So right. this will really up your game a lot. Yeah, and that's actually a really good point that you don't have to confine this technique to a ring. Like, you, as you said, I've seen Courtney Jensen, who's another local jeweler who does an amazing, amazing work. She does a lot of bead mosaic work, but she's also right. a very fine metalsmith as well. And she does uh, file rings, stack rings kind of thing. And she also does file work on the edge of very heavy like the back plate for a pendant, for example. But you can do file work on a heavy bezel to do patterns. What's, what's your name again? Courtney Jensen, J-E-N-S-E-N. -E -E She's up in Bellingham Way, right? Bellingham, okay. Washington. Cool. And her work is exquisite. I mean, really, really amazing. Um, so th I think one of the things that a lot of people f have in their toolkit is a uh, a little distrust of files because they started out using crappy files. Right. If you yeah. have start, if you have a set of cheap number two cut needle files that skitter and grab and don't really cut and then cut where you don't want it to cut. Right. This is, you need to take the class so that you can get some good files. And even if you don't take the class, you can go look up the class online and, and it will talk a little bit about like the good files for this, like which are the files I recommend. So then you'll at least understand like, oh, I need right. some de decent files are one of the places you should definitely spend money. Because the difference between okay. a good file, oh my God, 
I know. So sweet. I'm I sorry. Know. Jennifer's like, we got, we got you started on files. And, I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry. You got me started. <laughs> so. Julie, it's all your fault. And I hope this is in the class. <laughs> Julie, if you're still there. Still there <laughs> you Julie. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, it's um, the other thing that you mentioned that, that I think is important to know with our classes is that all of our material lists are mm. available. You don't all no, the tool Julie, list. don't apologize. Right. No, it's okay. Don't um, apologize. She loves talking about files, really. I do. <laughs> Thank so, you. Thank you for offering me that opportunity. But yes, this is a really important point. We do not put our tool and supply list behind a paywall. Yes. So you can go and look at any of the Little Metal Foxes classes and you just have to, you know, go to the page where the class is and you do have to scroll down, right? Yes. Scroll down, people. Scroll, scroll down, down and you can pass see the, the images, list. Pass the class description. There will be uh, recommended supplies and recommended tools. And yeah. so particularly and links, that have and specific links to tools. all of that. And links to, and then if there's, if the link is broken or if you have a question, just email us info at littlemetalfoxes.com and we will answer you. Even if you're not in the class, we will answer you. Right. So, um, so and, and, and just to note too, we have added about four, five, 10, 15. So we've got about 20 new classes that we just posted that will take us from now through, uh, the, I think the end of October. So we've right. got a bunch of new classes up. We've also some got a, new, some new stone setting new classes a from lot of you. New classes we've not done. So two yeah. prong setting, uh, casting, gravity casting, stone settings. Um, we've got, uh, yeah, pearls and half drilled stones. And um, yeah, all of, and the tapered prong settings or tapered tube settings. So I've got four new stone setting classes that I've not done before uh, for this. And um, I've done them. I mean, not here. Not for little metal foxes. Not for all little metal foxes. Stone setting so, students yeah, are like, why? <laughs> no, but uh, classes that we um, have not offered before. But right. we've also got, you know, the basics like, you know, setting up your home studio, know right. your torch. Uh, stamps and punches and a bunch of good basic classes too for people who need the some basics or refreshers or putting on putting a home studio together you know it's really important to work safely and um, and speaking of which making sure that you take safety class that is on the website we uh, I highly recommend taking safety class whether you're taking our class or somebody else's just to make sure you're working safely in your studio it's ten dollars you have unlimited access to it and um, it's, it's really good to, if you're working in a group studio, if you're working in the home, please take it. We just want you to be one. safe. Yeah, yeah, we just want you to be safe. So there yep. you go. Um, it's not a class. It's a two hour. It's a lecture. lecture. Yeah. 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 And, and again, um, if you buy that, even if you don't buy that and you have questions, you can always email, email us. We will yeah. answer. Um, also, too, we've got some guest artists that are going to be joining us later this fall. Uh, we've got Hello. Michelle Lee Air coming back and yes. doing another filigree class or two. So we're looking forward to that. Um, hey, Leslie. Hi, Leslie Stenhouse Parker. Leslie Stenhouse Parker. <laughs> so we've got, um, uh, yeah, we've got uh, Michelle joining us from Lee Air Works doing filigree. She's also going to be teaching at the, the Joria Academy in London coming up this fall as well. So shout out to her and them. Um, mm -hmm. We've also got uh, Leslie Perino that's going to be doing an amazing enamel class. Oh, God, that class looks so cool. So I am cool. So I cannot excited wait about for it to go up for you guys to see it. It's just the yeah. coolest looking thing. Yeah, and she and teaches enamels folder. all over. She is uh, located in Evanston outside of Chicago, Illinois, and she teaches all over the place and does amazing jewelry and enamel work. So, and, and she does stuff that it's like, oh, you know, she kind of has some stuff that you haven't quite seen before and really makes it interesting. So mm -hmm. that's going to be coming up this fall as well. Do you know the date on that? What's the date on that? It's not listed yet, but. It's not listed yet. I, I don't it's remember. October. Or... It's in October. Yeah, it's in October sometime, I think. Yeah. 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 And I think Michelle's is the end of September, if I remember correctly. So, yeah. So those two are going to be listed soon. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we've got a bunch of classes this fall. We're really excited about that. And so stay tuned and keep keep checking. But we did just add like 15 more classes to the website. So something new for those of you that need something new and some basic stuff for those of you that need some refresher or need to know the basics. So there you go.
There you have it. Yeah, so join go us for Go forth and burnish. Yeah, go forth and burnish. Go forth so, and burnish. Yes. And um, yeah, so show me your favorite burnisher again. One that has the curvy tip. I know. I love him. That's awesome. That the one. curvy tip. I know. Yeah. They're really good. Yeah, so yeah, if you don't have one. And this is my one. second favorite, one that I made. Your second favorite one, the one you made? I don't know. I, Say, you know, even though the steel burner is kind of down I have like a little, I have a little army of them here in front of me. You have so, a little yeah. army. <laughs> little, all your British are minions. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. They're, yeah, they just sort of like, I could play chess with all the ones I've got on just on my side. Um, but, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got a lot of stone setting to do, lots of pendant earrings to work on, and uh, lots of stone setting varieties that that i really am looking forward to sharing with everybody so i know yeah. i'm super excited about your your two prong your two two prongs class yes i love yeah. the two prong settings they're they're kind of they just look like they can't they can't work right you know, know like people look at them and they're like why is that stone falling out of there it's like because i made it <laughs> and it's not <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, two prong settings are really cool. And yeah. I've got, yeah, the gravity cast uh, settings. I've got a couple here that I was working on. I've got this one's uh, kind of like a heavy bezel that's on that one. And then prong setting on nice. that one. So yeah, doing little prong settings. These are both in cuttlefish, but there are lots and lots of options for doing stone settings um, with a direct pour that you don't have to like carve a wax for and they can be really accurate. And um, yeah. So, and some of them are repeatable depending on what mold material you're carving into. But yeah, you don't have to go through. It's great for a small studio because you don't have to carve a wax, send it out, wait for right. it to come back, you know, and however right. long that takes. Right. Hey, right. Jen. Hi, Jen. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, the direct pour is a real quick, fast, easy way to go. And um, you can get great accurate results. I use it for all kinds of stuff especially with my cuttlefish stuff, but um, I love the results and because it's just like, I can get, I can get prototypes made really quickly without having to go through the lost wax process. Yeah. You know, it's very immediate and great in a small studio. And I know, I know you really love, and so do I, the cuttlefish texture, but it is yeah. possible to do cuttlefish casting oh, yeah. and like tamp the cuttlefish down and make oh, it yeah. smooth, yeah. right? Traditionally, so, traditionally, that's how it was done. Right. And the flaw in the material would be to have that pattern show up. So right. traditionally when it was used um, back in the day, uh, before it became more of a, a popular craft jewelry casting thing, um, you know, back in the you know, 19th century, it was used as uh, before vulcanized molds mm -hmm. uh, as a mold material that, that you could press objects into. And as you pressed it, it would compress the cuttlefish texture so you would never know that. Right. Or it would have very know, clean, you know, I mean, even now, be you gone. can do it be that way. And it, then it you just make the piece. Yes, it was it considered was a flaw. Similar. But what I'm saying, well, all I'm trying to tell people is, if you are not a fan of the cuttlefish texture, which it's okay, we still love you, even if you aren't, you can do cuttlefish casting that has minimal texture and then polish it off so right. that you get to choose your texture. Is it all right. insane? So, yeah. Don't absolutely. feel that you're that you're that you're trapped in cuttlefish territory. No, <laughs> extra territory. If you're doing cuttlefish casting, you have right. options. Right. And right. Jennifer, I'm sure we'll talk about those in the class. Absolutely. Yeah. Got. Um, there are a number of. We just did the gravity casting workshop last weekend, um, but there's a number of things that you can use for gravity casting, especially for stone setting, um, charcoal, cuttlefish drywall, uh, plaster, um, you know, the list goes on and on and on. So yes, so if you want to do some stone setting and you need it like right now and you don't want to fabricate it, you can mm -hmm. cast it, man, come on down. So yeah, that's gonna be um, October 16th. So, and cool. I fully expect that one to sell out. So you might want to sign up early if you're- If you're, if you're Jones and for <laughs> it, sign up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so, okay. All right, All right. well, Okay, so we've got uh, Kombu this weekend. You've got your mm -hmm. favorite burnishers picked out and ready to go. Ready and, to go. Uh, yeah, and add some decorative stuff. Drywall, yeah, Kyle, yeah. 
I said drywall. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, uh, Kyle is an amazing uh, instructor for one of the high schools down in Auburn. And I have to say, Auburn has uh, a couple of high schools down there that are off the hook when it comes to jewelry making. So, yay. And, but I learned this trick from actually another high school teacher that was in Shawnee Mission in, uh, oh gosh, uh, Missouri, I think. And yeah. And so uh, right outside of Kansas City. And she was telling me that her husband did construction and he would bring home like the, the thick drywall that was fireproof and they would cut down the leftover pieces into like four by six pieces for her high school students, peel off the paper and sand it down. And you've got a fireproof plaster that you can carve into to do gravity casting. And I was like, that's brilliant. So anyway, yeah, it works really well. And, and it's if you've cheap, got, which for high school students, cheap. for a high yeah. school teacher, it's like, oh my God. Yeah. And, <laughs> and for her, it was, a free, it was a free right. material because they could, um, yeah, it was like leftover from cutting out windows and stuff and doors. So he would have this leftover waste of, uh, yeah, of drywall that they would use for gravity casting. Works great. <laughs> so, yeah. So you don't have to pour your own plaster. It's, you know, already made with all the fireproof stuff in it. So there you go. Perfection. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Aha. So talk to your contractor <laughs> and, and your contractor friends and you're all set. All right. Okay. All right. So we've got lots of classes, new, listed. Go check it out. Uh, get into Julia's class for Kambu this weekend. And fun. I'm going to be off to London uh, shortly. So I'll be here next week for tool tips, but I'll be in London for the one after that. So um, we've got. Sure I will come up with something. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all will so, be up my yeah. <laughs> we, may, we may do a little uh, little metal foxes abroad live broadcast. Uh, I hope so. There <laughs> where we are, um, we're hoping. I'm hoping that we get to interview a couple of different people over there that have amazing jewelry studios that are quite famous personalities that you might know. But I don't want to. Don't, don't want to drop your hand. Yeah, I don't want to be like, it didn't happen. So I'm just hoping we're going to get in to, be, to talk to a couple of people and uh, see, see some studios and, um, and see what people in, see what those people in London do with jewelry. So <laughs> we're going to visit some museums and uh, we're also going to be in Paris for part of that. So we're going to see some stuff in Paris and possibly whales. So we're going to... Probably whales. Oh, yeah. Are you whales. a whales? I thought you meant whales like W H L A. No, and, and we're going to talk to whales. <laughs> I got to see whales. I was just on vacation and I got to see orca, orcas, which are not whales. They're big, big porpoises and humpbacks. I got to see humpback whales. Yeah. We're not going to see whales, I don't think. We're going to go to whales. <laughs> You're going to go to whales. Whales. W A L E F. Not to see whales. Yeah. Not whales, but whales. <laughs> so, yes, that country next to and attached to uh, England that's part of the UK. <laughs> so, that one. Where that Cardiff one. is. You know, Time Lord stuff. So, that's where we're going. Um, so, yeah. So, I think we're going to go there and hopefully, uh, like I said, do some interviews. And so, we've got that coming up. But um, stay tuned. And uh, as always, check out all of the tool tips on Instagram and you can also see them on YouTube if you want to just like hit that and uh, smash that like button and subscribe. So you've got, yeah, so take a look at all the stuff that's on there and um, there's lots of good tool tips. We've got uh, over about 75 of them on there and there some of them are like little classes in what we do and also uh, playing with fire and some interviews and things like that. So check out our YouTube channel as well. When you get back, we'll have to do some more playing with fire. We'll come Indeed. Up I'm looking forward to it. Yes. So uh, setting up your oxygen concentrator, that was a good one. That was fun. On. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And right. playing with the page torch tips gave us a chance to look at those, which was cool. Yes, too. indeed. Yeah. So for people that are like, I, I don't want to have oxygen and gas and concentrated bottles in the studio, the oxygen concentrator is a great way to go. You can also get um, like 
little disposable uh, propane tanks, or you, mm-hmm. you can use uh, uh, propane or natural gas concentrators as well. So, yeah. Oh, but that's, that's, good cool. that's good. Now we've departed the text again. So now yeah. it's time for us to go. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Everybody have a great week. Sign up for Kumbu and take a look at our other classes coming up. And we're looking forward to seeing you then. And we'll All see right. you next week. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.